Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I'll be taking a very close look at Castle Black as it is seen and depicted in the Game of Thrones TV series. And again, that was the TV series, not the books, TV, not books. TV. Why? Because TV is a visual medium and it actually shows us the castle. Now Castle Black is very, very interesting and as I look at it, I've had to ask myself, is the structure that I'm looking at an actual castle? Now it is a castle, I'll just get that out of the way, but I do feel I'm being quite generous when I say it is a castle for a large number of reasons. It's not your typical castle. The big reason is the wall, okay? Let's point out the elephant in the room and address the wall. The massive ice wall actually makes up the front of this castle. Now, that might seem odd. Well, you would identify the front of a castle to be the direction in which the enemy has to approach it. And that will generally be where the main defensive features of a castle will be located. And the whole point of the wall is to defend against the north, the wildlings. All the main primary defensive features around this castle are put on and around the wall. Everything else is quite neglected when you look at it. Its three other walls are barely walls at all. They are profoundly ineffective for defense. There are barely any battlements. There are some, okay, and I'll get to those. But mostly, not even there. And this is when I think, if, if you were to take away the wall, the ice wall, and just look at, you know, the uh, main structures, I wouldn't really call it a castle anymore. Its defences are too ineffective. What it really is, is a slightly secured, walled-off compound or barracks. And indeed, Castle Black that's its main function, and you need to understand what I say, because when you say Castle Black, you actually do have to include the wall in it, because the wall is an inseparable part to it. But the smaller stone structures behind the wall, that functions primarily as a barracks. And so take away the wall, not really a castle anymore, mainly a secured compound, a barracks. But with the wall, that's where I say yes, I could call this a castle as well, because the wall, my goodness, has a lot of defensive features. And we see those features when the wildlings try and attack it. One of the most primary features about it is how just utterly impregnable it is. It is so thick and so tall, there's no, you know, chance of breaking this thing down. Now don't get me wrong, there might be some exceptional, you know, circumstances in the narrative of story to explain how, if, when, or why this wall might be able to be torn down in some areas. But in a general sense, because of its thickness and height, impregnable. That's the first huge feature about it, okay? It's, and, of course, that's a feature that is often repeated, not to this extreme level, of course, but a very important thing about any castle wall is thickness. I really consider one meter thick to be on the thin side in regards to castle walls. Two meters, four meters, they get that thick and even more. The other thing about the wall, the ice wall, is the height. There's actually a sound tactical principle here. It is so high that enemy archers, barring giant archers, can't shoot high enough to the defenders on the wall. Makes it very, very secure. But of course the defenders have gravity on their side, so they can shoot down and their arrows will reach not a problem. And just a side note in regards to the giant archer, Yes, he can shoot high enough to reach that level, but still, that's a huge distance, okay? I think the show portrays this shot being achieved far easier than it would be in reality. This is a masterful one in a million shot to actually hit someone right in the chest from that distance. But then the defenders aren't only relying on arrow fire to defend this wall. And another side note, fire arrows are utterly useless. They're pointless, okay? Lloyd of the YouTube channel Lindy Beige has done a full video on the topic of fire arrows. Phenomenal video, I highly recommend that you go check it out. And in that video, Lloyd guides us to a very logical conclusion that fire arrows are pretty darn useless and they really only exist in fantasy and cinema. So anyway, the other things that they do on the wall to defend, they throw down barrels of burning oil. Very, very effective. Now, I'm not sure it would create as large a fireball as we see in the show, but still, if you're underneath these barrels and they land, you're not going to be happy. 
And there were similar kind of things done in history in regards to murder holes and, and the like. They didn't necessarily drop barrels, but burning oil is something that you hear often. Now, oil is kind of a, an expensive resource. You generally wouldn't opt for oil, but one thing that I've heard people have used in the past is boiling sand or melted sand, and then pour that down on your enemies and... <laughs> Ouch. Very painful there. And in regards to the show, they have other more fantastical types of defense, like the big swinging pendulum of death. And for the context of the show, I think that is awesome. The other thing in regards to the wall that I just love about it, and you've heard me mention this design feature, if you have watched my other castle kind of videos, one where I talk about it a bit more in depth, is my video where I review the cities and castles in Lord of the Rings. What am I talking about? Double gates on gatehouses. Now, the wall doesn't necessarily have a gatehouse. It has a tunnel, but in that tunnel, there are two doors. Thank goodness. It would be ludicrous if you didn't at least have two doors. But what's interesting, it's so wide and long, this tunnel, that you could have ten doors on this thing. Layers of defense, people, let's make it as hard as possible for the enemy to break through this door tunnel. Though I will point out that it is mentioned in the show that collapsing the tunnel is an option to keep out enemies, which is brilliant, awesome, thank goodness, yes. Having a type of fallback or redundancy like that is absolutely logical, makes sense, very realistic, I love it. The other thing that they could have done is dug out two kind of side tunnels on either side of the main tunnel with arrow loops or arrow slits cut into them so if anyone breaches the first gate as they break through and trying to get to the second gate or are stopped at the second gate you can just fire in at the enemy and even better than that of course murder holes above it and so what we're seeing here in guards the wall are many proper medieval kind of defensive mentalities more than one way to attack enemies. They've got archers, they've got the barrels, they even have balusters and the big pendulum of death. Then they have two main doors on the entrance and a means to collapse the tunnel. Now, in regards to defense, the rest of the castle is quite hopeless. Is it unrealistic? Well, this is where I find it very interesting. I actually don't think it's unrealistic because it speaks of something that is very true in the human mentality, and that is arrogance. We have this monolithic, impregnable, massive wall of ice serving as our primary main level of defense. It would not be unreasonable to assume that no one could get past it. Look at the size of this thing. So I could see people saying, well, there's no point in fortifying the other walls of the castle because they're not even going to get past it. It's a massive weakness, all right, because anyone who, want, who would want to take Castle Black would know that the worst place to try and attack this thing is the place where it is most fortified and defended, which is the ice wall itself. And so the best tactical option you would have is to try and get past the wall somewhere else where it's less defended, sneak people through it, past it, over it, whatever way, and then attack this castle from behind. It is profoundly vulnerable from behind, which is indeed the exact thing we see in the show. Now, I'm not a Game of Thrones or a Song of Ice and Fire expert. In fact, far from it. I'm not up to date on the background, the lore, or many of the ins and outs of the show in particular. I'm analyzing these structures and indeed this castle, Castle Black, as it is shown and represented. But from what I understand about this world, Castle Black wasn't supposed to be threatened by any peoples or anyone on this side of the wall. All the nations and kingdoms, under normal circumstances, they would have absolutely no reason to attack Castle Black at all. It's the Night's Watch. These men serve to protect the rest of the world, every single person of every single nation. So the lack of defense on the back of Castle Black is almost a sign of trust. But any enemy who has any brains at all would be able to figure out that the best place to attack it would be from behind. So let's look at the back defenses of Castle Black. It really doesn't have any, okay? All these structures look to be actual habitable structures. They're not defensible towers. They have no battlements at the top of them or arrow slits on the side. They're just buildings. 
thank goodness they don't have large windows, because that would have made it even worse. So at least there's that working towards their favour. There's no windows facing the outside for the enemy to climb through. But there's no way for the, the actual stone structures themselves, for people within those structures to use them defensively. And then in between those structures is wood, okay? We have a wood kind of hoarding, which is a battlement, all right? So we, it gets that when not in the battle scenes, there's no cover or walls to protect the people in this walk, these walkways between the stone structures at all. But in the actual battle, we do see barriers have been assembled. And the members of the Night's Watch who are on there are ducking behind them for cover, which is great. Okay, so that is proper battlements. The problem is that there isn't enough of them. They're squished in between these stone buildings. And because they're squished in between these buildings, the archers that are inside the hoarding themselves, their range of fire would be greatly reduced because they have stone walls on either side blocking their widest angle, which means they can't really shoot sideways. And indeed, someone could run up to this wall and stand in the middle of one of these stone buildings and be completely out of range and not seen by anyone inside these walkways. And so because the hoardings are in between the stone structures, the stone structures are actually providing cover for the enemy. And underneath these hoardings or walkways, there's just a wooden barrier. And in the show, the enemy is just, a, they're able to kick these barriers down and climb through them. And on top of that, they're not high at all, okay? Double the height of a human, and that's about it. And so the defenses on the back side of Castle Black are woeful. Which is a pity, because the layout has a very good design in it. And that is, it has two inner wards or baileys that are divided by an internal barrier or wall. That means if the enemy ever breaches one of the main gates, they haven't breached the whole castle. They've only breached half of it. They would have to break through the other half to fully capture and conquer this castle. So the main structures behind the wall fall very short in regards to proper effective battlements and defense. And like I said, it makes sense for the context of what this castle is. It is most predominantly, and when I say most predominantly, I'm talking about the stone structures behind the ice wall. It is most predominantly a barracks, a place where the members of the Night's Watch sleep and eat. It isn't the primary defensive part. The wall is. And in that context, it makes sense, but again, has many weaknesses, like I have pointed out. Thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, and until next time, farewell. If you would like to support Shadowversity, or express appreciation for a video that you particularly enjoyed, please become a patron through Patreon. Your $1 donation would be absolutely wonderful.